do option. Enable smart recording with AI companion. I don't think we should try it now. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, so when I say I don't know, that is saying I know. <laughs> Simple translation. <laughs> One sentence translation means when I say I don't know, what am I saying? I, I know. I know. Na prakashi. I don't know. Then you see, this is very interesting. The verb to know is it transitive or intransitive? Transitive. Yeah. Then you have to go back to age eight when you heard grammar lesson. Even in Sanskrit, we have Sakarmaka Dhatu, transitive verb. Transitive verbs, to put it badly, are those verbs that uh, answer the question, What? I eat. Aham khadami. Everybody is interested. What? What? What do you eat? <laughs> I know. Same thing. Transitive verb. What do you know? I want to know what you know. I sit. Nobody can ask, what do you sit? <laughs> what do you sit on is a different thing. <laughs> but here directly you can ask what. Nobody says, what do you stand? What do you sit? Why do you stand? Why do you sit? You can ask. <laughs> what do you stand on? You can ask. But you can't ask, what do you sit? But directly you can ask, what do you eat? What do you drink? What do you know? Right? So, I don't know. So, when I say I don't know, whether you say no or whether you say don't know, then there should be an object. Transitive verb is which, which necessarily, compulsorily takes an object. So, what is the object of your knowledge? That's a very important and a wonderful question. What do you know? But then, what is the object of your ignorance? That's also a very pertinent question. I don't know. What do you not know? Please tell me what you don't know. Then I'll make a list. I don't know Mandarin language. <laughs> Oranges I know, yes. But <laughs> fruit I know. But I don't know the language. I don't know Mandarin. Then what else do I not know? I don't know Hebrew. And then... <laughs> What else do I not know? What other languages do I not know? I don't know so many languages. I don't know French. I'll never know French. Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> half, the, half the language is silent and the other half is not pronounced how it looks. <laughs> and the whole language is articulated with one inch of the upper lip and one inch of the lower lip. Very delicate. <laughs> Sanskrit is the total opposite. Vivrata, open. French is Amvrata, closed. <laughs> and Sanskrit is 100% phonetic. What you see is what you get. What you hear is what you pronounce. French is totally opposite. So French, not only do I not know, but I'll never know. Okay? <laughs> So there are like this, so many things. I don't know. I don't know. But I am the knower of the ignorance. The I don't knows always are relative. 
the I know is all pervasive. I know pervades the I don't know, always. And in Sanskrit, in the Shastra, we have a very interesting maxim. That which pervades something has more power. And is more subtle. Mm -hmm. So, I know pervades I don't know. So, the I don't know is what? Defeated. There is no I don't know ultimately. Because I don't know belongs to the object world. That's why we can ask, what do you not know? And I can list the objects. I don't know this particular galaxy. I don't know that uh, black hole. I don't know this particular planet that they have recently discovered. So many things I can say. I don't know the God particle that also is there. Yeah. The building blocks of the universe. I don't know. So as long as I can name the I don't know, 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 then that I don't know is overpowered by pervaded by I know. I am the witness of the ignorance of matter, God particle. I am the witness of the ignorance of galaxy, of black hole, of languages, which I don't know, of cuisines in the world that I don't know. Some I don't want to find out also. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> So I don't know. So many things I don't know. 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 But behind that I don't know is I know because I am witnessing the not knowing. Correct? Mm -hmm. So there is such a thing called ignorance and the ignorance is a cover as it were. Ignorance covers my understanding of so many things in the world. It covers and it distorts both. Ignorance can cover my own understanding of myself also. That's why I'm here in the class because I, I have self-ignorance. I want to get rid of self-ignorance. That's why I take up Vedanta. Self-ignorance very much being there. Then I want an antidote. What's the antidote? Chocolate cake. No. <laughs> Self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is the antidote to self-ignorance. That's why I'm here. But who told you you were self-ignorant or you have self-ignorance? Who told you? Did the neighbor tell you? No. Did your friend tell you? No. Otherwise, the friend would have been taking Vedanta. <laughs> I myself suffer from self-ignorance, meaning I am the witness of what I know. I am the witness of what I do not know. Very interesting. So there is such a thing called ignorance. It covers everything as it were. And because of that covering, it distorts the perception of everything. It says only one thing it cannot cover. What is that? Atma. Cannot cover Atma. As long as that self-conscious I is there, it cannot cover that. It can it, 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 it overpowers, it pervades the ignorance. Pervades the ignorance means in and through the ignorance, what shines is the knowledge. So ignorance is small pervasive. Atma overpowers the ignorance. The Atma is of the nature of the great revealer, which also reveals the ignorance. Hastamalakhiyam brings up a very nice point. On a day like this, where you feel like you're living under a thick teacup, then <laughs> Hastamalakhiya doesn't say that. Okay? I'm saying that. Yeah. Hastamalakhiya, I'm still warming up. I'm coming to that. <laughs> so people thought I was quoting. No, I'm not quoting. Yeah. So I go out and I say, Oh no, no sun. <laughs> there is no sun today. But that's a lie. <laughs> that's 
That's a statement of ignorance. Why? Sun is very much there. Yeah. It's because of the presence of which sun I can say no sun. Very interesting. So the clouds cover everything except the sun. In fact, they reveal the sun. The sun, because of the sun, the clouds are seen. So, ghanachannam, ghanachanna drishti, ghanachannam arkam manyate, atimudha. Manyate. Manyate means considers, thinks, comes to the conclusion. Ghanachannaha arkaha, iti conclusion. The ghana means the uh, clouds. The clouds have encircled and hidden the sun. Who says? The cataracted one. Ghanachanna <laughs> drishti. The clouds have encircled your vision, not the sun. And so when we talk of Atma as Chit, we are talking at this level. It's, it's even beyond the ontological level. It's, the, it's at the level of the, pre, uh, of the illumining presence, which illumines everything which is not opposed to ignorance, including self-ignorance. Atma is not opposed to self-ignorance. How many people in the world, do they know Vedanta? No. They are going along in the world. Atma doesn't say to them, hey, study. <laughs> oh, but we say ignorance is opposed to knowledge, but that is on the Vyavaharika level. Ultimately, Atma is not opposed to ignorance. Otherwise, it would not let this person go along, sadly, in life. <laughs> it would not, you know, it, it, it's, it's not opposed to ignorance. It is that which transcends knowledge of objects and ignorance of objects because it is that revealing presence which reveals both the knowledge of objects and the ignorance of objects, including it reveals itself. And it also reveals the ignorance of itself, which is there in the buddhi. So it's not opposed to ignorance. It's a revealing ever-present, illumining entity, Atma, I. And this is what is illustrated in this particular verse. So like, for example, if we say, if you go into a room and the light is covered with a cloth, let's say, then you say, oh, there is not enough light. <laughs> In fact, it's the light that is asking you to, has enabling you to observe the covering. The bulb is evident. The covering is also evident. Now, let's say there is a thick covering. In another room, there is a bulb and then there is a lamp there. And then that lamp is covered by some kind of an iron thing out of which no light escapes. Then, when you go in, you would neither see the lamp, nor would you be able to see the covering. And you will not even know it is covered. But that's not the case with I. I know there is a covering and I cannot stand this covering. This statement or this cognition that I don't know is not an independent self-standing cognition. It is its dependence is on the self-revealing presence, which is called I, Atma, Satchidanandam Brahma. This Brahmatma alone can reveal both the knowledge of objects in, and the knowledge of itself, and the absence of objects and the uh, the ignorance of everything, including itself. Ignorance covers. Ignorance is very powerful. It covers everything except one thing. What is that? I <laughs> cannot cover I. Then, what does it say? Did we cover all the words? Yeah. Swaprakasham tam atmanam aprakashah 
Katham sprishet. Sprishet means how can it sully? How can it sully? How can ignorance sully the self-luminous eye? The self-luminous eye which is beyond, beyond, beyond anything. How can ignorance affect that eye? The light of consciousness illumines even the my own ignorance. The light of consciousness illumines my ignorance. But then that is what is that light of consciousness? Don't think it is some kind of a you know spotlight coming from somewhere. It's you. Yeah, it's you. That's why I can uh, I can say Janami, I know because my knowing it illumines. And then I can also say, na prakashe aham, na janami aham. I do not know also I can say. It illumines the prakashe aham. I, 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 I am knowing. I, I know. And then it also illumines, I do not know. Okay. Yeah. So, this is the, uh, uh, this is the meaning of this verse number 16. Anandamaya Kosha, meaning that, uh, why is it co connected to Anandamaya Kosha? Because the nature of ignorance is being examined. The nature of ignorance, which is connected to the Karana Sharira, which is the, in, which is expressed as the Anandamaya Kosha here, is examined here. And how is it examined? It's examined in the form of the, uh, what's its name? In, in, in this particular form, it is examined. And, uh, as that presence which illumines everything, including the ignorance of itself, relative ignorance of itself. Just because I'm ignorance of the I, ignorant of the I doesn't mean that the I is not there. That is what we have to understand. I is there, but I don't know. That is exactly uh, what it illumines. So then, if I am the all illumining, self revealing presence, then, and where ignorance cannot touch me with a 10-foot pole, then I should be all knowledge, correct? Ah. I should know. Because all I need is exposure to knowledge. And I have been studying Vedanta. I have been studying Vedanta. I have been studying Vedanta. I have been studying, 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 studying Vedanta. Number of years I have been studying Vedanta. Before that also I was studying. <laughs> so the ignorance must go. Must go. <laughs> Why isn't it the first opportunity I, you know, come down from Paramarthika to Vyavaharika faster than a, a what is that called, you know, the, um, the, the, the rocket. How come? How come I cannot stay in, with this knowledge? How does this knowledge elude me like that? The moment I say Purnamadaha, <coughs> Purnamidam, no matter how lofty the subject matter that was discussed, then immediately, where do I go? What's for the break? <laughs> Oh, it's in limited quantity. I better make make myself go over there quickly <laughs> before somebody else reaches. Maybe thoughts like that, or thoughts like uh, what else? You know, so many other thoughts, so many ideas are coming. I don't want to go uh, follow each one of them, <laughs> but you get the idea. No matter the, the subject matter of Makaranda, Advaita Makaranda is very lofty. And then I'm able to stay with it, which is a great blessing, in the course of the teaching. And as soon as the teaching winds down, only for, uh, you know, the, the one class is wound, wound up and the other one is yet to start. In between, I, I have wandered all over the place. Not that the wandering is wrong, but the identification with that wandering, the identification with the body, the body identification quickly comes, even if it had gone briefly. It comes back. Identification with the mind also comes. Saggy baggy. Foggy. Yes. This is the foggy part. 16 and 17 is foggy part. Ignorance. We are discussing ignorance. Yeah. 
<laughs> Perry doesn't like me to keep saying saggy baggy foggy. Uh, so it's true. Yeah, it's true. And so I I get involved in the involved in the finite. Not that is that's also not wrong, but I treat the finite as the infinite. That is the problem. I get involved in the finite. Treat it as the infinite, and then I have to pick up myself from the floor part by part. And so, what happened to Vedanta? What happened to this self luminous I? So, the author talks about this in the next verse out of great compassion for all of us. And so, let us see the next verse. Verse number 17. Tathapya bhati kopyesha. 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 Tathapya bhati Together. Tathapi. Tathapi means even though there is not a whiff of ignorance in the Atma as the Atma, Tathapi, Eshaha, Eshaha means Ajnanam. So, actually, Eshaha doesn't go with Ajnanam, should be Tath, but anyhow, if we can masculinize Ajnanam, so how was it referred to in the last verse? Let us see. And uh, Prakash, yeah, it was not uh, referred to at all. So here, the uh, Eshaha, the masculine, goes with Vichara Bhava Jeevanaha, that compound will we'll do that, which means Ajnana, basically. So, uh, let us look at the translation first. Tathapi, even though, even though what? That's the segue from the last verse. Even though it's all illumining, the, even though the I is all illumining, a, B, even though the I is all pervasive, even though the I can cognize both knowledge and ignorance and is beyond knowledge and ignorance on the relative level, yet, that's what it means, Tathapi means yet, despite these things that we talked about, this ignorance, whatever it is, whoever it is, <laughs> Has seem, seems to have an abiding presence. <laughs> the author concedes that. Why? Out of great compassion. So you don't go away thinking that, okay, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who doesn't know. Everybody else knows. And Lakshmi Dharakavi also knows. Why me? First of all, I'm ignorant. And I thought, why me? And now my why me is coming into the for, forefront. Why I, I only don't know. When in, along with the ignorance, then there is also sorrow. There is also hopelessness. There is resentment. There's all kinds of emotions come into the picture. So therefore, so that one doesn't feel bad, it is said here, that happy, even though the Atma is totally free of all ignorance. I come under the spell of Avarna. Come under the spell repeatedly. Oh, now I feel much better. Exactly, that's the whole point. It's a pick-me-up verse. So, I don't feel bad about myself. So then, where is this ignorance 
where does this ignorance draw from? Draw means what? Nourishment from. How does it stay alive? What feeds this ignorance? Because for everything to be alive, it needs watering. It needs a little bit of fertilizer, like a plant. You need to water it. You need to put fertilizer. And if you're an avid gardener, you can sing to it. And you can make nice noises to the plant. It will grow well. You can, have, you can pray. You can have that. There are many prayers in the Rig Veda for the plants. And you can, you can pray. You can uh, sing. You can chant. You can do all kinds of things. Then the plant get, gets nourishment and grows stronger. So here, how does the Ajnanam derive nourishment? That is given in this compound. Vichara bhava jivanaha Ajnanam. Vicharasya abhavaha. Without enquiry. Jivanaha means, this is a bahubdihi. So Jivanaha means that which is life affirming. So that ignorance, whose life is repeatedly affirmed wherever there is no enquiry, self-enquiry, is called ignorance. So the ignorance has a special name. What is the name for ignorance here? The one who is buttressed wherever by, by lack of inquiry, by the absence of inquiry. What kind of inquiry? Self-inquiry. The one whose presence is buttressed by the absence of self-inquiry. Vichara bhava jivanaha yeshaha. Jivanaha is not my life. You see that, 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 that mistake must not be made. Jivanaha means that which derives nourishment. How is it alive? That's how it is. It's referring to Ajnanam. How does the Ajnanam get fat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does it eat to get fat and continue to stay and not move from the buddhi? <laughs> that is what we are looking at. So the ignorance is described in this compound as that which is fed by absence of self-enquiry. The absence is the food here. The absence of self-enquiry, ironically, there's a nice irony here, Vyangya. Uh, you know, food means it should be filling. But here, the emptiness yeah, about self-enquiry is actually very filling to the Atma Ajnana. It gets fat. So more wrestler it becomes. <laughs> and, and fights with you when you go to Vedanta class. It will tell you things like, what's going to come out of it? How many people get moksha? Even in the seventh chapter, what is it said? In the Bhagavad Gita. Manushyanam sahasreshu kashchi yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kashchin maam veti tattvataha out of thousands of people, one seeks me correctly. All the other people are seeking me wrongly in the sense that they want, uh, they see me, Bhagavan, as an end to their desires. Whereas, I'm not an end. <laughs> I'm a means to desirelessness, moksha. So very few people, one out of uh, hundreds of hundreds of people, see me as a means to the end, which is not separate from themselves, most of the people see me as an end to be accomplished. Sorry, as a, as a means to an end, to be accomplished. Very few people see me as the end, which is the truth of themselves. When Bhagavan becomes the end, then that is the end of the quest. But usually people say, how can I milk Bhagavan to get richer, to get more famous, to get this, to get that? So Bhagavan becomes a medium. And so the... Then, out of the thousands of people, one seeks me correctly, one sees me as the end. And out of the thousands of people who see me as the end, one person gains me in totality. Tattvataha. One person gains this teaching. And so, at the beginning of chapter 7 in the Bhagavad Gita, everybody's heart sinks. 
Yeah, when you study. Oh, that means you know, I'll never get this knowledge. This is a subjective interpretation where your hopelessness has hooked into the Bhagavad Gita and is quoting the Bhagavad Gita. The hopelessness got excited for a change. Yeah, oh, they are talking my language. <laughs> Depression and hopelessness got a little bit excited. Oh, I can use this to quote and see, say why I'm not gaining this knowledge. But that's not the, the that's a very subjective and a wrong interpretation. That's a misinterpretation of this quote. What is this quote saying? It, it is saying that if you are studying this, if you have come up to chapter seven, you are one of those rare few people. You're not an outsider, you're an insider to this discussion. So, there is, there is room to feel good, not bad. And so that is the, the whole idea of that verse. And here also, the feeling, who will know? Why should I make an attempt? Each time you say that, you are giving a high-carb diet to Atma Anya. <laughs> Agnyanam gets fat and becomes a cardi baby and then what does it do? It, it continues to attack you. Each time the word Vedanta comes, it makes you allergic. You start having a rash. Guru, oh my god, terrible rash. Vedanta, rash. Ken operations. Ayayo, can't handle it. And then it's very logical. All the logic will be there. Yes. This is not the time to study Vedanta. No, pray tell which is the correct time to study. After I have finished all my jobs and duties. Will your duties ever finish? No. Okay, then keep quiet. Then another thing it will say. It will say, well, this knowledge is not so much for me. I know all this. Who is it for them? The significant other. They should be in this room. <laughs> Not me. It is for them. One lady came to me and said that, you know, I I have a 22-year-old son. Please make, how to make him study Vedanta? <laughs> I said, you study Vedanta. And she was surprised. She said, oh, if I study, he will get it? I said, no. I said, you will stop wanting him to study Vedanta. <laughs> That's the point. That is the problem that you want him to study Vedanta. Not that she was regular, she hardly came. But she was like, I, I'll bring him every day as though he's some, you know, two-year-old. I'll bring him and keep him and take him back. I said, how old is he? 22. I said, you study Vedanta. Oh, if I study, he will get it. I said, no, he will not get it. But <laughs> you will stop him from wanting, you will stop from wanting him to, your desire to make him study will go. So then this is how it is. And each time I think like that, Atma Agnyanam gets fat. <laughs> He just put on a little more weight. Gets bloated. That's one reasoning. It's not for me. It's for this one. It's for the neighbor who is adharmic. It's for that one who doesn't know. It's for the other one. All the be beloved people in my life, it's for them. They need to transform. Why? So that they'll treat me better. That's why. <laughs> they need Vedanta, not me. Me, I have been there, done that. That's the third argument. Yeah, yeah, I studied Vedanta when? 25 years ago. <laughs> I studied everything. So, oh, that's wonderful that you studied. You studied Ken Upanishad? Check. Yes. Katho Upanishad? Yes. Munduko Upanishad? Yes. And all other Upanishads you studied? Yes. So what is it like now? 
You studied 25 years ago. What is it like now? I gave it up. Why? <laughs> I gave up the question. <laughs> Why? It don't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Atma Agnanam just broke the chair it was sitting on. It put on so much weight. <laughs> I'm crashing. When you think like this, when and not you, anybody thinks these are all your real examples. Not making it up. People have come and either told me this directly or I have been present when they have told Pujya Swami this directly. I studied. I gave it a good shot. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? That there is no inquiry. See, this is the vichara abhava. This is exactly vichara abhava. Immediately one thinks the problem is not with me. What is the where is the problem with Vedanta? See, the whole Vedanta is very interesting. If you get the knowledge, it is Guru's grace, God's grace. <laughs> if you don't get the knowledge, it's your own lack of grace. Yeah. You can't blame the Guru, you can't blame the Shastra. So we are covered, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Either way, we are covered. <laughs> and then what are the reasoning? Uh, the, then the thing is this, that, you know, who will get moksha? There is a hopelessness, depression. And then self, uh, lack of confidence, absence of confidence. Everybody else will get it except me. One is convinced. And one says that with a straight face. I won't study. Why? It's a waste of time because I'll never get it. The person has concluded that by themselves. You go to the retreat instead of me because you will be able to get it. I won't get it. <laughs> Very generous of you. <laughs> I'll not get it anyway. So why bother? That's one more way in which to pump up the Atma Ajnana. And then what else, you know? It's not important. Yeah, that's another thing. It's not important because you cannot put it on your resume. I have self-knowledge. If you put on your resume, nobody will hire you. It's a fact. If you start talking about it in the interview, they'll back off slowly. And they'll not, they'll just say, okay, please leave. The interview is done. Oh, but you said 45 minutes. Yeah, we already got out of you in the five minutes. But in four or five minutes, we got out of you what we wanted. Please leave. You can't milk Atma Ajnana. You can't say, I know Atma Ajnana. At least if you say, I know President Biden, some few doors will open. But if you say, I have Atma Ajnana, I know Atma Ajnana, no doors will open. Nothing. Nobody cares. Everybody will say, so what? Tatakim. <laughs> There's a whole Gurvashtakam. Tatakim, 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 Tatakim. They'll say, so what? If you know, so what? Keep it to yourself. I don't care. So, the person in the grip of this, in Atma Jnanam, finding reasons for not study. We'll make this also. It is of no use in the Vyavaharika. It is of no use. This knowledge is not useful in the transactional reality. So why should I take the pains to study? It is of no use. Why is it of no use? Because I can't put it on my resume. All the reasons I've given you. When I'm having a fight with a significant other, I cannot say all is one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, for these reasons it's of no use in the everyday life and what happens to the Ajnanam gets fatter and fatter and fatter and then one more is there a corollary of this one like, uh, but the truth is, first let's refute this. 
the truth is in fact you need vedanta in order to have a sane everyday life wherever i go i get the request please talk about gita in everyday life all right i'm always talking about everyday life <laughs> Please talk about Vedanta in everyday life. As though everyday life is different. This is for everyday life. This is for the everyday. If Paramarthikam Sat, if the knowledge of the absolute was for the absolute, then why are we studying this? <laughs> it's for the relative. It's for right here, right now. So that, that is refuted. So it's, it is for the everyday life. It's because my everyday life is fraught with conflict, fear, upset, sense of lack, wanting attention which I'm not getting or hiding from too much attention. So many things are there. Because my life is like this, that's why I need Vedanta to set the head straight. The head is reeling from, what is that, rolling in samsara. Needs to, it needs to be set straight. So it, in fact, I need it for the everyday life. I don't need it for Paramarthika, Paramarthika life because Paramarthika life does not have these problems. I need it for the everyday life. That is the refutation of that particular uh, line of non-reasoning. I can't call it reasoning in, in, uh, in good conscience. So definitely I need it for everyday life. And then what else is there? One more came, one more thought came about in terms of how the Agnanam gets fat. And then uh, it will be like this, that uh, it will say something like uh, some argument. Uh, yes, I am studying. Yes, I'm also enjoying it. What if it transforms me? Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's a surprise. That had a lot of resonance. Okay. <laughs> Uh oh, it's going to be very transformative. <laughs> I don't like the unknown. I want my life to be totally predictable, including the moment I want to circle the date on which I will get enlightenment. <laughs> stupid the thought is, totally stupid. Because if enlightenment were an event that happened to the self, that can be marked on the calendar. Yeah. That means what? It is time bound. Mm -hmm. So then I assuage these people by telling them it's a gradual dropping of identification. And I think it has helped to say this. It's a gradual dropping of wrong assumptions and wrong identification and a gradual uncovering of the clarity about who I am. You know what the Ahankara says? Ooh, you said gradual? I'm not going to let that happen at all. Yeah. I'm gradually not letting that happen. <laughs> as soon as something is about to drop, uh oh, <laughs> catch it, hold on to it. Growl for good measure. You can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> Stay away. Hiss. Go away. Yes. <laughs> All the instead of the best behavior, the bestial behavior comes out from animal samskaras of territoriality. All you have to lose is your self-ignorance. I don't want to lose that, okay? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you want to lose that? Because I'll be the only one enlightened. <laughs> and then I'll not have any friends if I'm the only one enlightened. I'll be all alone. <laughs> That's not the meaning of the word kevala. Kevala doesn't mean lonely. It means only. I'll be lonely. And some... Some people, the so-called God men and God women, write these kinds of nonsense. So lonely paths. <laughs> You'll be all lonely. And if you get this knowledge and nobody else gets this knowledge, you may not be able to relate to anybody. What nonsense. 
Really? You feel like taking that agnyanam and shaking it till it dies. Really? All wrong thinking. First, there is the thinking, all contradictory thoughts. First, there is the thinking, what if I don't get this knowledge? Oh, no. And what's the other thought? What if I do get this knowledge? Oh, no, no. Terrible. Yes. The Agnanam is a challenge for the Shastra. <laughs> so, therefore, for these reasons, it has an abiding presence. It appears to have some kind of a mithya it is, but it seems to have an abiding presence because I'm not letting go of it. I am feeding the Agnanam secretly. I'm sitting in class and listening. At the same time, I'm sneaking in food to the Agnanam on the side, <laughs> making it grow fat. The Agnanam goose is getting fat. <laughs> And that's why this is vichara bhava jivanaha. This agyanam is described as the one that is patterns itself on a life of non-inquiry. To this we have to also say durvichara jivanaha. Wrong inquiry. See, no, no inquiry means I don't know. Okay. At least then it you can be taught. If you say I don't know, you can be taught. But that's not what the person says. The person says, I know I won't get this. How can you teach that person? I know I will get this, so I'm going to resist you, for, fight you tooth and nail so that I won't get it. And then I can tell, then I can go back to that hopelessness and say, you were right. I'm not going to get this. <laughs> Very complex. So, durvichara, wrong inquiry. Avichara, absence of inquiry. Ajnanam morphs into anyatha jnanam, says the Mandukya Upanishad. That is what is the problem. I don't know is not a problem, really. Even dog doesn't know. I am God. It doesn't know. But it's happier than, than you. Much happier than you are. As long as it is not uh, hunted, as long as it's not abused, it seems to be much happier. And therefore, Ajnanam is not... When we say Ajnanam, we mean... In the human being, the ajnanam morphs into a wrong identification and a wrong knowledge, wrong series of inquiries. And all of them are detrimental to this seeking. That's why, what is the what is what is to do now? What to do now? Starve the onion. <laughs> Put it on a diet. How to starve the onion? As soon as these thoughts come, catch the thoughts. Let them dissipate. How to let them dissipate? Witness the thoughts. Don't go along with the thoughts. In the witnessing, the thought withers away. And Agyanam says, I haven't eaten for three days. <laughs> I feel kind of weak and hollow inside. Good. <laughs> you cut off like, you know, some, some tumors you cannot get to. What do they do? They, they cut off the blood supply to it. They're blocking the artery, leading to that tumor. And then it dies away. Here also you don't feed it. You cut off the blood supply. The blood supply is in the form of all these notions, wrong notions. What if I get this knowledge? Oh my God, I won't have friends. Who said? Nobody I can relate to. In fact, you can relate to many people. Much better because they don't have to deal with you. As soon as you walk uh, in a room, they will not hide behind the wall. Yes. You will be welcome presence wherever you go because they don't have to deal with you. 
Swadeshe Pujyate Raja. The king is famous in his own land. He is worshipped in his own kingdom. Vidwan Sarvatra Pujyate. The knower of this knowledge is sought after everywhere. Everywhere. Not just in the, the, the land of his or her own birth. Anywhere you go. The holy person is a holy person who, who doesn't have to be dealt with. Because there is a sense of security connected, uh, centered on the eye. Because of that, the person is not looking at you with eyes of longing. Will you be my friend? <laughs> no. That's a feeling of bondage. They're not expecting anything from you. Such a person, you don't, you don't have to deal with them. The person who doesn't have to be dealt with is this person of knowledge. And so therefore, this knowledge is so sought after. And all these fears, any, even if you give me 100 more fears and 100 more wrong thinking, I can sit here and refute each and every one of them. But I think you get the picture. So don't give this humor called Anyatha Jnanam blood supply. Because it is malignant and it will eat up the pursuit. It will eat into the pursuit. It will make one drop out. That's why we keep praying. Maham Brahma Nira Kuryam. Maham Brahma Nira Kuryam. Mama Brahma Nira Karoth. Let me not deny this Brahman. Denial happens through many, many things. This cannot give me what I want. What I want is other things. So many things. Let me not negate Brahman out of some wrong ideas. And let Bhagavan Brahman not, let me never feel that I'm, I have been abandoned by Ishvara. It's a very sad feeling. I have been abandoned by God. Let me never feel that. Anirakaranam astu, anirakaranam me astu. Let there be non-negation on all sides. See, this, all these psychological issues our uh, rishis knew. Let there be non-negation on all sides. Let there be non-negation for me. Anirakaranam me astu. And then, what to do for this non-negation to be there? What to do so that I turn into a person that says yes to life, yes to Vedanta. Yes to life means yes to Vedanta. Yes to Vedanta means yes to myself. When I say yes to myself by taking this study absolutely seriously, then that is a form of self-affirmation, not self-negation. Usually we are engaged in tricky forms of self-abnegation, self-negation, self-abotage. That's really what it is. When I really give this a chance, I say yes. So what should I do to say yes? That is also given at the end of the prayer. Tadat mani nirate yad upanishat sudharmaha te mai santu. Those dharmas, attributes, values, attitudes that need to abide in me as, <coughs> as what? Viveka, Vairagya, Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanam. If you think I'm talking, and Mumukshutvam. And then if you think I'm talking a foreign language, then in the la next class I will uh, elaborate a little bit. These are all qualifications. A tranquil mind, a settled mind. A non-longing de demeanor. Longings will be there, but the ability to suspend them and put them aside should be also there. Forbearance, patience. Okay, it's not happening now. Maybe it will happen later. Patience. Receptivity. That, that Let me give the teaching and the teacher a benefit of doubt. Maybe that it is hitam for me. Maybe what is being told is in my own good. That kind of a bhavana, shraddha, astikya buddhi. Yes, there is, a, there is a trust here. And that trust is developed and given a chance for that pramana to operate. Single-minded focus. I don't dissipate the, I don't dissipate the pursuit. By having 
too many irons in the fire. Yes, there may be things I have to do. I have to go do them. First, I ask myself, do I really need to go? Do I really need to do this? There may be things I like to do, which is okay. But all those desires subserve this pursuit. I may have many desires. Remember the airport example. You know the airport example? Because many people are leaving today. So some people are leaving today. Who all is leaving? You are leaving. Okay, you are the only one leaving. Okay. Yeah. So you are headed there, airport. And you're early. So then you decide to go buy something because they don't feed you on the plane. You go to the grocery shop. When you are at the grocery shop, where are you headed? Airport. And you don't buy a whole lot of things for, for, for your... You don't do a list of grocery shopping. You just pick up some small thing because you're headed to the... Airport. Uh, airport. <laughs> then you find you have a little more time. And then you drop off your dry cleaning. When you drop off your dry cleaning, where are you headed to? Airport. airport. <laughs> And then you find you still have a little more time. Then you call a friend who lives near the airport. <laughs> then after that you go see the friend. And the friend says you can park your car here. Don't pay for parking. I will drive you to the airport. The whole time where are you headed? Airport. Similarly when you study Vedanta, where are you headed? Don't say airport. <laughs> Moksha. That is never lost. You see, between now and the airport, so many things I did. But that orientation, I am going there, is not lost. I mean, it's front and center. I may do many things. But uh, the, my destination, I'm not misled. I don't move in with a friend. I'm just there on the way to the airport. This is exactly how the pursuit is. And then equipped with these values and attitudes, then this Ajnanam will be starred and Moksha will be mine. Om Purna Madhav Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purna Sya Purna Madhaya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om